This clip is being recorded using the iPhone's built-in microphone. It's about four feet away from me right now, and you can probably hear a lot of room noise and maybe even the hum of my computer. If the air conditioning is on, you're going to hear that. It's not very good, especially since it's pointed that way right now, and I'm in front of the iPhone. So, the rest of these clips will be recorded with different microphones, trying to get the microphone closer to the sound source, which is me, so that you can hear it better. This recording is being done using a Vericorder XLR to iPhone adapter. Uh, you can see right here, it's plugged straight into the iPhone, and I'm holding a Shure SM58 microphone. It's a really nice handheld dynamic microphone. You can also use this microphone for things like live performances, miking a guitar amp, uh, drums, all kinds of things. It's a great microphone to have, and it only costs about 100 bucks. Uh, this cable costs $60, and the advantage it offers is it has a headphone jack in it, and it has uh, some, some amplification directly in the cable, so I can plug straight into the iPhone and start recording. Uh, I'm also going to do a test in a few seconds using a 25-foot XLR cable to see how well the sound holds up over that distance. This test is being done using the Vericorder XLR to iPhone cable uh, with about a 25-foot XLR mic cable. This is just a run-of-the-mill, off-the-shelf mic cable, and the sound still is pretty good. In this clip, I'm using a Shure SM58 microphone plugged into a 25-foot XLR cable. And to get that into the iPhone, I'm, I'm using a KV connection adapter that has both an, an XLR jack and it has a headphone jack so that you can get the microphone in and get audio out. Uh, this cable's a little bit shorter than the Vericorder cable, uh, but it still sounds about the same. It's, it's pretty high quality, and uh, I think the cable's about 20, 25 bucks, something like that. This is a test recording with the Radio Shack 33-3024 microphone. It's a, uh, it's a quarter inch phono jack microphone. It's kind of an older style used mostly for like tape decks and things like that. Uh, but I have it plugged straight in through the KV connection cable to the iPhone. Uh, and this KV connection cable has a, f a quarter inch microphone input and a headphone output, which is pretty nice. And the cable costs, I think, 16 or 18 bucks. Uh, this microphone you can find at any any Radio Shack that has the PA stuff, and it's probably only about 25 or 30 bucks as well. It's a pretty cheap microphone, but it gets pretty good sound with the iPhone. In this video clip, I'm using a Radio Shack Lavalier microphone. It's the standard one. It's the 33-3013, I'm pretty sure. And it's plugged into a KV connection adapter cable that goes from an eighth-inch jack straight into the iPhone using the tip ring ring sleeve connector. Uh, this KV connection cable is about $10, uh, maybe $12 shipped, and the Radio Shack lavalier mic is about $25 to $30, bucks, depending on when you get it. Um, it's a pretty good solution. I usually keep this, actually, inside of this little uh, baggie right here, and you can tell the sound level is not quite as clean as other solutions, but it sounds good enough for me, and I often do podcasts with this since I'm going to be compressing it anyways. Uh, you don't need the utmost sound quality for that. So uh, this is a pretty good portable solution. I typically keep it in my bag with me, but I don't use it for more uh, high-end production. In this video clip, I'm recording using a Sony WCS and WCR 999 wireless system. Um, it's about $100 for both units, and it comes with its own little microphone, but here you can see I'm using um, the same microphone I use in some of the other tests. It's the little Radio Shack Lavalier. Um, I also use an Audio-Technica microphone. I think it's like ATR3355, something like that. Um, you can use any typical camera lavalier with this wireless system. And as you can hear, if I move around this cable a little bit, there's a little bit of staticiness. I mean, that's the kind of trade-off you make when you pay 100 bucks for one of these as opposed to a $500 lav system that they use in professional studios and recordings and things like that. Uh, but it typically works great for me if I leave it clipped onto my belt or you can just leave it sitting on a table. If you need more than 10 or 20 feet, this is great. But then again, if you go more than 80 feet or so, it drops out usually on me. Um, so your mileage might vary, but it, this is one cheap way to get a wireless system. 
In this video clip, I'm using a Crown Sound Grabber 2, which is a PZM or boundary microphone. These microphones are usually a bit more sensitive than other kinds of microphones, and you can put it on a wall or a table, and it'll pick up sound from everywhere around it. Um, it's a pretty good option for recording interviews and things like that, but with the iPhone, you might need to have amplification in front of it for it to be loud enough. For instance, you can hear me pretty fine right now, but if I move it a few feet away from me, the sound level goes down quite a bit, and I'm speaking pretty loudly right now. So, uh, for this kind of microphone, you might use something like, I suggest, a Shure FP12, which isn't in existence anymore, but it's a great headphone amp that works with the iPhone. Or you might look into getting a small guitar amp or a portable headphone amp, something like that, that'll help you get great sound out of this little guy. In this video, I have the camera pointed down a little bit more, because on top of the camera, I have attached a, um, a Rode video mic. And the video mic is attached to the iPhone uh, by using an, an X-Grip grip for the iPhone. It actually works with any consumer video camera or DSLR or whatever. Uh, you can mount lights and microphones to the top of this grip. And that allows me to be mobile and have a stable platform to put my iPhone on. Uh, when I'm doing interviews on the spot and things like that, you'll hear uh, this is a very sharp sound. It sounds great. Uh, there's a lot of echo, but that's only because I'm in this room right here with drywall uh, on either side of me, and it's all reflecting straight into the microphone. If you're out in a field, if you're in a larger room, if you're in a carpeted room, uh, the sound is going to be even better than you hear right now. And if I walk over to the side of the microphone, uh, it won't pick me up as much. As it'll pick me up some in this room because of the, the bouncing sound, but um, in most environments, it'll, it'll get a lot quieter on the side. So it's great for pointing the microphone straight at somebody you can even put this microphone on a boom somewhere and hold it out in front of the person out of the camera's frame and, and that's usually how they do it on movies and TV shows and things like that to get a really crisp, clean sound even when the camera's far away. Um, so I'm going to walk over on the side and you'll hear that the sound goes down a little bit. Again, in this room it's not going to be a whole lot, but it'll be good enough for the purposes of this video. So now I'm on the side of the microphone and you can hear, uh, you're pretty much hearing only echoes and a little bit of the sound straight from my mouth. Uh, the microphone picks up straight in front of it a lot better than it does on the sides.